Hey, this is Andy. And Randy. And we're here on AT Corner. Being an athletic trainer comes with ups and downs, and we're here to showcase it all. Join us as we share our world in sports medicine. Welcome back to another episode of AT Corner. This interview episode, we are going to be talking about something I feel like doesn't get talked about very often, especially when you're a student or a young professional. You just get thrown into it. You just kind of like, here you go, make it happen. And that is the physician AT relationship. Yeah, I feel like you kind of see your preceptors yes. deal with their team physician and you kind of hear about referrals. But mm-hmm. other than that, it's kind of mostly watching your preceptor. Yes, like a lot of times, you know, when you're a student or again, young professional, you're you're in a position where you're probably at a place that already has a really strong relationship. So you're just kind of like, Everything's all good. You don't necessarily have to consider what was the behind the scenes or that legwork that got that relationship there. Kind of like what our interview was about was the dating game. (laughs) That did come up a lot. That came up a lot. And it's kind of true. I mean, you are trying to feel out the other person. You're trying to get to know them and develop a, you know, a nice professional relationship. One that you use more often than you would think. Yes. Yes. Yes, there's a lot of communication, calls, text, emails. Yes. Uh, my team physician texted me last night at like t- after I went to bed. See? It's, it's, a lot of times it's the other way around, right. it seems like. <laughs> seriously, seriously. So we also have some special news for this episode because we have two guests. Yes. Yes, we haven't had multiple people being interviewed in a while, it seems like. It hasn't. So do you want to introduce Dr. Wong and I will introduce Brian? Yes. So from the team physician perspective, we have Dr. Wong. He's a board certified orthopedic surgeon who specializes in sports related injuries of the knee, shoulder, hip and elbow. His clinical expertise includes advanced minimally invasive arthroscopic procedures and reconstructive joint surgery. He has specialized training in the field of biologic joint preservation procedures, including modern cartilage restoration techniques and arthroscopic hip preservation surgery. He is the chief of the sports medicine division at UCI or University of California, Irvine, and the head team orthopedic physician for UCI athletics. He had a fellowship in sports medicine and shoulder surgery at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York, New York. He completed his residency in orthopedic surgery at UCLA Medical Center, and he completed his medical school at the Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine of Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. We also have Brian Gallagher, who is a certified athletic trainer with expertise in sports injuries, rehabilitation, and return to sport strategies. Prior to joining UCI, He worked for 15 years in FBS football as the associate director and athletic trainer for Stanford University football at the University of Maryland, University of Toledo, and University of Connecticut. Following that, he worked as the director of sports medicine at Harvard Westlake School in LA. He did his undergrad at Westchester University of Pennsylvania and his grad school at University of Connecticut, where he got his MA in kinesiology and sports management. Awesome. And I feel like we don't say this enough, but um, we do go over, well, first of all, we go over so much in this episode. Yes. But we um, there are in the show notes timestamps of each thing that we do talk yes. about. So absolutely. there are some bonus things at the end, so don't miss out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> also, I think what was really cool with this episode too is you got to hear two different perspectives, the team physician and kind of from the athletic trainer who you know, was in a traditional setting who now is also in the clinic as well. So really gets to see all different sides of this kind of relationship. Yeah, I think it, I think it was pretty broad. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, let's get started. Let's do it. Randy, you want to get us started? Yep. So to kick things off, I think it's a good idea just to kind of understand some of the duties or what's kind of expected when you take on the role of a team physician. So what are some of those duties as a team physician? Yeah, I think um, there's uh, the obvious duty of um, looking out for the well-being of the athlete slash student athlete sometimes in college and high school. Um, 
but but more so um, as a team physician, you know, you're sort of the central hub or coordinator for a lot of parties that are involved with the athlete's care. <clears throat> so obviously a big crucial part of, you know, our job as a team physician is to work directly with athletic trainers uh, who are doing most of the grunt work and running the ground game and with the student athlete or athlete all the time. But also, you know, as a team physician, you're coordinating, you know, sort of being that being that central hub for open communication with all the other parties, including the coaches, physical therapists, nutritionists, even consultant physicians, um, and uh, just anybody else who would be involved with uh, the athlete's care. I think you're sort of in charge of just making sure that everyone's on the same page and, you know, looking out for um, the best for the athlete. When looking for a team physician, what should an athletic trainer ask to determine if that physician is a good fit for the program itself? Yeah, it, it's, it's funny. You know, one thing I've learned um, just through my training and being a team physician is that um, it's not really about, you know, how good of a doctor and how much you know. It's really about, you know, do you work well and, you know, as a team? Um, are you a team player? And so, you know, as an athletic trainer, if I was in that position, I'd look for a team physician who was willing to work with athletic trainers, with all parties, someone who's not thinking that, oh, hey, my, this, my decision is the only decision. No, just working with all the parties involved and, and making sure that, you know, for instance, for me as a team physician, for return to sport decisions or you know, rehab decisions. I go to the athletic trainers, I go to the physical therapists because they know more than me about that kind of stuff. You know, I can do the surgery real well, real well. I can do the, you know, diagnoses of what the problem is, but but I, I sort of let the specialists be the specialists with regards to that. Um, as a team physician as well, you know, uh, you should always be available. Um, you know, I go to the training room one day a week, but uh, you know, other days of the week where I'm not there, I think you need to be available by phone, by email, because obviously care of the athletes is, you know, 24 seven. So someone who is available, um, and has, you know, open line of communication. I think that's, that, that's the key part is just, you know, being a team player here. Yeah. And I think from the athletic trainer perspective, I, you want a team physician that's going to be collaborative and accessible, like what Dr. Wong mentioned. Um, you know, as an athletic trainer, the team physician isn't isn't always there. So as the athletic trainer, you have to be the, the hands, the eyes and the brain of the team physician when the team physician's not there. So you want someone who's collaborative, someone who's accessible, someone who, you know, if, if you have a question, you, you can't hesitate to, you know, pick their brain or ask them. And you, you also have to be a, uh, you know, an active participant in the healthcare of the athlete with the team physician. You can't just sit there and, and listen to the directions or the directives from the team physician. You have to be able to give and take a little bit. And, uh, you know, uh, I've been fortunate enough throughout my experience at really, really good experiences with that. And, and Dr. Wong, uh, sold me on his idea for what a team physician is. And, and to be quite honest with you, that's why, that's why I'm working with him right now. But at the same time, you know, Brian's had so much experience working with, you know, collegiate athletes. I, mm -hmm. uh, I ask him sometimes as well, you know, what, what, what should I do? You know, cause you know, he has a perspective from the athletic trainer and, and, um, you know, I want to do, you know, what, what, um, a, you know, a team physician should do. Um, and, and so he's a, he's a great resource for me. That's really awesome because I've noticed that too with some of like the physicians I've worked with in the past. A lot of them really pick the brain of the athletic trainer of like, hey, what like what do you need for me? And then like a lot of these physicians that you know take that time to be a team physician seem so willing to like help and like just hey, whatever I can do, let just let me know. Yeah, and it can't be a, a territorial thing. You know, you're all mm -hmm. you're all one. It's a it's a multidisciplinary approach to healthcare, and and each discipline has to come together like spokes in a wheel. You know, and and that's that's the 
I don't know, the, the way we think that, uh, that the healthcare for athletes should be. Yeah, no, absolutely. I also like how you guys touched upon availability of the team physician because, you know, athletics, as we all know, is is very um, up and adaptable schedules. So when we have, um, you know, different sports going or we have um, games that are not on the same day every week and or, um, you know, we're trying to get someone ready for a game and they want to see a physician, um, our team physician, like that week, it's really helpful to have someone who is available to give updates, available to see our patients and athletes and all everything. Yeah, yeah for sure. Especially for in season, right? You know, you may have, yes. uh, you know, a, a game later in the week or two games week, you know, every week. And you want to do the best thing possible to get that athlete ready to play the next game or as fast as possible. So you can't wait a few days, you know? So I think, having the team physician, you know, for me, you know, if someone needs an MRI, you know, for instance, you know, I think if we can facilitate that and help us any way get that as soon as possible to make a return to play decision or, you know, sort of figure out what's going on. I think that's, that's really important for the player who wants to get back as fast as possible, obviously for the coach and then management. <laughs> so, you know, I, you know, that, that's just part of our, our, our responsibility is to, is to do that kind of stuff. So in, in cases where like you're trying to add a team physician, maybe to your team, or in some cases I've seen it like a newer school, Hey, like I, I'm new to the area and I need a team physician. How do you start that conversation with someone that you think, Hey, I think this person might be a good fit. You know, with, with us, um, you know, I, the, the way, um, that I guess the official way to go about it is to you know, once you figure out a, a physician that you want to align with, it's, I think, um, the best way to go about it is to establish a MOU. So a memorandum, memorandum of understanding, something mm -hmm. written down that sort of details, you know, what your partnership is, um, and what the roles are. And, um, once we, you know, you have that agreement signed, then, then it's sort of, is explicit in terms of what you expect out of each other. And, um, uh, you know, with that MOU personally, as a team physician, team physician, I feel the privilege and, um, obligation to take care of, um, you know, whichever party that we have that agreement with, um, and be responsible for the care of the athlete, um, and manage the, various parties and facilitate the multi-disciplinary multi approach. So okay. uh, I think that's the, the best way to go about it if you want to establish a working relationship with the team physician as an institution. Yeah. yeah I think okay. in terms of, you know, deciding whether or not you want to pursue that opportunity, it's just like anything else. If you're, if you're looking for a contractor for your house, you're not just going to, you know, open what would have been the, the yellow pages and pick the first one. You have to do your research and your due diligence on them and, 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 and find out if, you know, uh, uh, you both have the same vision and, and things of that nature that if, if you have the same priorities and, you know, check your egos at the door and have the same priority mm -hmm. in caring for the athlete, the, the financial aspect of it and the, and the agreement aspect will take care of itself because you're both striving for the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I do think it takes a little bit of legwork and it takes some face-to-face -face meetings. You can't just be texting to, to find out if, if both parties are on the same page either. It's yet. a dating game. Yeah, it is. It's a dating, <laughs> game. It's a dating but, game. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you have to get along with each other and you know, it may take a few dates to sort of feel each other out. Mm -hmm. Um, and even with the MOU, you know, it's still going to be a, you know, a dating game, you know, until you establish years of working together and, 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 you know, things going smoothly, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's just part of the, the, the relationship. So kind of along those lines of like that, you know, doing your homework, some of that due diligence, when, when you're trying to see, Hey, who should I reach out to, to maybe be my team physician? Are there any certain credentials that you're looking for or any type of specialties or like certain schooling that would be beneficial? Actually, to add on to that, I was just thinking yeah. of, um, you know, some athletic trainers have family practice physicians with uh, more of a sports medicine background mm -hmm. and some have orthopedic physicians. And so even just if you yeah. could touch a little bit uh, upon like the differences between that. 
Yeah, even on the medical side and the, the MD side, um, it's a multidisciplinary approach. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just the orthopedic side that takes care of the musculoskeletal injuries. It's the, you need a, you know, basically at the credentials you're looking for in orthopedics is someone who's trained in orthopedic surgery, who's done some sort of fellowship training in sports medicine, orthopedic sports medicine. It's usually within that one year orthopedic sports medicine fellowship where that training and taking care of, uh, you know, uh, sports coverage, team coverage, uh, taking care of athletes really comes into play. So looking for that sort of um, training is, is helpful for the orthopedic side. Um, the orthopedic side would obviously take care of the muscle skeletal injuries or be in charge of that. <clears throat> but you also want a physician who's um, primary care sports medicine trained, who uh, would take care of, you know, concussions, all the medical uh, issues, for instance, with um, <laughs> COVID, <laughs> um, but also like in your runners, you want to make sure that, um, you know, stress fractures and all that, you mm -hmm. want to make sure their, <clears throat> their, um, the metabolic parameters are optimized. So you, you need a primary care sports medicine specialist to take care of the medical issues. And then nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, a sports psychiatrist is always um, mm -hmm. going to be helpful as well. Um, yeah. especially on the pro side, um, along with, you know, someone to sort of direct where that athlete can go if they have other issues um, outside of um, the muscle skeletal arena or the medical sports medicine arena. Um, we always have consultants for, you know, neurology, cardiology, um, you know, other subspecialties that may arise if a problem occurs um with with a student athlete or with, a, with an athlete so yeah no i i agree i think having having the availability and accessibility to subspecialties is is crucial um i think it's very uh beneficial to have a team physician either from both from the primary care sports med side and the orthopedic sports med side that either was an ex-athlete or really understands athletics and and knows that you know things the, the sense of urgency required for everything when it comes to athletics uh, is beneficial because um th there is no you don't get that from a book you get that from experience and you know mm -hmm. working in athletics and working in sports medicine it's not a job or a career it's a lifestyle and someone needs to understand that so but for general weekly coverage um people who are going to be working with you on a weekly basis it's it's usually you know an orthopedic surgeon who's sports medicine trained or mm -hmm. uh, um, a mm -hmm. primary care physician who's also sports medicine trained. So kind of like along the lines of what you guys are talking about with just all these different specialties and subspecialties that also comes along with maybe even like the insurance networks can sometimes play a role in this um, when you're trying to, you know, send student athletes, you know, to their physicians. How should an AT navigate just the relationship between having different, um, physicians on their team or just in the area? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's critical for the athletic trainers uh, to understand, you know, secondary insurance policy or the policies of the institution or the, the, you know, environment that you work in, you know, are you going to build the athlete's primary insurance first? When does the secondary kick in? I mean, that's stuff that, uh, um, it's changing year to year, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but that's something that you have to have an understanding of before, you know, before, you know, the, uh, before you jump out of the plane and see if you could fly, you know, you got to make sure all of that, <laughs> all of that is in line so that the athlete's taken care of. And I think that's the, the other reason to the, the benefit of an MOU, uh, you have that in writing and you establish, um, you know, those plans, uh, beforehand. And so, you know, you know, if that athlete's insurance is, is out of network, there is an understanding that the secondary would kick in, um, uh, with that MOU. So, uh, we have that set up here and it's, it's worked out fantastically. And there's gotta be a point person who is that insurance liaison. It can't be the athletic trainer that's covering sports. And then also, oh, you know, no. apples in the insurance game, you know, it's gotta be a, a, a person, a point person who can, 
use that as their primary responsibility because it is so much and it's it's oh holy smokes i i definitely agree with that because at my previous institution i basically played insurance coordinator because (laughs) i was the director of sports medicine and i was the middleman between like our physician's offices and like whoever we referred to and then our insurance so i'm like messaging being the middleman i'm like this is brutal i, I need yeah, someone who knows you all the time <laughs> if yeah. you're having to deal with health insurance you need someone to do that full time it's hard to, to oh. tackle that plus your athletic trainer responsibilities 100 mm-hmm. percent. i was sitting there thinking like look like i could handle maybe the basic stuff like to solve some of these issues but these complex issues like i need someone who like right. does this who works with this right the insurance is purposely make it difficult for you right to save a little money um you know on their end so you know battling especially in the u.s battling these insurances is a full-time job oh yeah 100 percent. so kind of going back to that mou actually um is that something that the physician has um like the physician would initiate or is that something that an athletic trainer should look into to start that when you need an MOU? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, um, you know, usually it's a, some sort of a agreement that, Hey, we should get this started. Um, mm-hmm. and then, you know, at least from my experience, getting the, the legal team from your party involved to hash out the contract and, um, and, and the details of it, uh, is, 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 is helpful as, is so that you don't have to worry about it too much. And then, you know, from, from our end, from the team physician, from the athletic trainer, we, uh, look at the contract and the details afterwards and just make sure that we agree with everything that's listed mm-hmm. on paper. But yeah, I, I think you, you definitely need to get, um, some sort of, uh, you know, legal advice on, on that. Mm-hmm. Are there like some key things that you would consider putting in, in, uh, MOU? Uh, you know, Li- liability, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, s- some sort of standing orders and uh, okay. position that, uh, you know, the athletic trainer should do this in my absence or should not do this in my absence, things of that nature. Um, the length of time, uh, you know, the, the length of the MOU, because things are constantly changing. You got to be able to go back and addend it, uh, uh, mm-hmm. as things change, um, you know, things of that. Okay. Yeah. Like any contract you, you definitely need Hey, this is, uh, this it's is, is valid time. until whatever <laughs> time. And then we can reevaluate, you know, uh, other than the insurance authorization and, you know, so for instance, who's going to pay for a surgery, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's got to be in there, um, but also you know listing out the duties of the various team physicians, you know, orthopedic, primary care, um, and uh, you know the specific responsibilities. If there's any sort of compensation that's involved there, um, there may be. Um, mm-hmm. The thing that we've found helpful is you know. Uh, when taking care of athletes, you know, undoubtedly, you know, um, they'll, they'll need some sort of x-ray or MRI. And so if, if there's issues with the current setup with regards to getting imaging, I think having that in the MOU would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. That's a, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we've, we've spent a lot of time kind of looking at from the AT's perspective and what, what to think about when trying to find a team physician, but what about from the team physician side? What are your expectations of the athletic trainer? Uh, so, you know, I think as for most team physicians, you know, we have, you know, our regular practice, um, seeing patients in the clinic as an orthopedic surgeon doing surgeries as well. And then as well for me, being an academic institution, doing research and teaching Mm -hmm. residents and, um, you know, taking care of student athletes or being a team physician is, um, is, is another responsibility or another role that you have to play. 
Um, and so, you know, because we have all these other duties or responsibilities, uh, you know, we're looking for an athletic trainer we can trust. Same thing, open lines of communication. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to hear about things when things go wrong. If they're not urgent, I also, you know, want, you know, the team, the, the, the AT to be able to take care of a few things or be able to triage um, certain injuries or, or, or whatnot. And so, um, you know, it's, it's a dating game. It's a wording partnership. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, from, from our end, you know, I like, you know, a lot of team physicians go in thinking that, oh yeah, we're going to get more business. We're going to get more surgeries. Um, but you know, that's to me, is not the right way to think about things yeah, mm -hmm. as a team physician. You know, I want to be able to take care of athletes. I think it's a unique population to take care of. For me personally, I learn a ton from taking care of elite athletes and seeing what they can do and stretches my practice so I can better treat, you know, uh, my everyday um, patient that sees me um, who are not all elite athletes. So, uh, you know, basically... Um, you know, the, the gist of it is that, um, you know, we want to have an athletic trainer who, who we like to work with and who we can, we see partnering up with in terms of, you know, for taking care of athlete, elite athletes. Yeah, no, that was, that was great. I don't have anything else to say. Yeah. You don't yeah, want sure, to absolutely. Your own rogue when you're not <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to no, do that. You... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. I, no, no. I mean, the athletic trainers are there and, and I trust the ones I want to know. I want to work with an athletic trainer who um, basically already sort of has a plan before I even see them and sort of has an idea about what's wrong. You know, mm -hmm. the really good athletic trainers actually have seen and um, seen more injuries than, than I have and sort of have a sense of, Hey, when the athlete needs an MRI or not, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, but the ones I've worked with in the past, the, the really good ones are some of the best clinicians I've, I've worked with. So it's makes it easy to, to work with people like that. No, That's for awesome. sure. Yeah, absolutely. So from like, a uh, like a support staff, so like, you know, everyone who's in that off in the physician's office from like the front desk or, you know, the athletic trainer that's also assisting in office. What do you expect from the AT when you have like maybe a student athlete being referred? Is there anything that the athletic trainer could do to kind of make that visit a little bit easier on you guys? Yeah, I think they can they can have a plan in place. Uh, just mm -hmm. streamline the process. Know when the athlete's available. Nothing. Nothing kind of frustrates me because I'm the one who uh, I, I get the text messages and the calls like, hey, we need to get someone in to see Dr. Wong. And I don't want to say like, OK, well, what's the injury? You know, uh, what's the athlete's availability? And then just keep going back and forth. Like, tell me when they're yeah. available. I'll get them in. Just you just, you know. Uh, don't tell me about the labor pains. Just show me the baby. You know, we'll get them in. Let's reduce the efficiency and the sense of urgency aspect. And um, that's something uh, uh, that, you know, a lot of the back office and the front office staff in, in a practice aren't necessarily used to, which is why I think I can help or an athletic trainer in the physician's office can help streamline that process as well. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of my role for, uh, for Dr. Wong or one of my responsibilities for Dr. Wong. And kind of take pride in, in, in doing that. Like he'll see someone on their schedule. He won't necessarily know other than what I put in the appointment notes, you know, that this athlete's coming in for this, for this issue. MRI was already ordered. They'll have it, you know, and, and, you know, he'll see them ready to go. Brian and, and, and my PA also are, you know, available in case someone needs an x-ray, a simple order like that or mm -hmm. physical therapy. You know, they'll put it in. I'm not always available because I'm doing surgery or, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, Brian's <laughs> somehow at the computer and, uh, you know, putting in orders that like r right away. So, um, um, you know, simple things like that, you know, he can do in a more timely manner than sometimes I can. Nice. That's awesome. I think that's also a good 
question to ask when you're starting to work with a new team mm-hmm. physician or if you're kind of starting in a new institution is sitting down with your team physician and just asking their own expectations. Right. Yeah, lay it all on the line so that there's no uh, you know, predispositions or, or everyone understands what's going to happen and what the role, a role delineation prior to getting involved. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and some, and, and, you know, to be honest, you know, some team, phys- team physicians will, will go in and, 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 uh, you know, they won't want to be contacted at night mm-hmm. or on weekends. And there's that, that's not how it works. So, you know, <laughs> as a, especially, you know, when, when the games are on the weekend. So, you know, as, um, as an AT, you know, I look for someone that, that at least has that support system. If the team physician is not available nights and weekends that, that, that things can still keep moving. Yeah, absolutely. Do you actually have any advice for an athletic trainer, let's say who starts at an institution and they already, the institution already has a team physician and maybe that athletic trainer just doesn't have the same philosophy or of that team or of that team physician. Yeah, Do I say that right? It doesn't AT vibe. And, yeah. <laughs> I think we've, I, or, I think we've all kind of been in that situation at some point <laughs> in our career. Uh, I, I think you just got to focus on the common ground. Like everyone gets into athletics and sports medicine for, for the same reason. And that's to put the athletes health care at, uh, at the, at the highest priority. So I think when, uh, when push comes to shove, uh, fall back on that and work from that, from that point of view, on. You know, you're going to check your egos at the door and, and, and just keep the health care of the athlete as as priority number one. Um, but yeah, I think you just got to fall back on the comment. You don't have to like everyone, you know, like uh, everyone you work with, you don't have to go out to happy hour afterwards. You just have to be able to coexist and, and work to each other in a collaborative way. I think it goes again uh, along the line, you know, with with uh, open lines of communication. You know, mm-hmm. you know, if there's something that you don't like, like you know, uh, I want to hear about that so I can improve. Um, if that's not the case, then you know that that's why you know teams often so, sometimes switch providers. So that's you know, usually that can be a last resort sort of deal. But mm-hmm. you know, it's 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 it it happens. So kind of, uh, going along with that, uh, when it comes to that time, like you said, of, Hey, we're probably going to have to switch providers and maybe not in a bad thing. Maybe just sometimes systems are starting to get a little more difficult or changing. What does that conversation look like? Or how do you start that conversation to let them know like, Hey, we're, we're probably gonna have to, uh, switch to a new provider. I mean, it's, you, you know, be political about it. You know, mm-hmm. um, don't say, "Hey, we're, we're firing you. <laughs> we're going to get rid of you." <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that does happen. You know, I think you know the way you know I would sort of approach it is like, "Hey, we're you, you know bring someone else on to, to to help out with the care." You know, you're still going to be part of the team, but you know, we'll, you know, if, if if it's okay with you, we'll, we'll have you know this other provider sort of to help out as as well with with the care of our student athletes and 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 hopefully you know it'll be just um you know good for all of us and just be transparent and direct to um Mm -hmm. you know it's like it's like breaking up in a relationship you know you don't you don't going back to that dr wong's dating game philosophy you know you don't want (laughs) to keep stringing someone along if it's just not gonna work out yeah i I agree with the the full transparency It's it's a it's a big thing i'd rather you know here straight that I'm not doing a good job mm-hmm. um, <laughs> rather than just sort of being string wall. Yeah. Hit, hitting them with the, uh, it's not you, it's me. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like a, the Seinfeld metaphor. Like we, it's like launching a nuclear missile. We both have to turn our keys, you know? And it's <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so this again will probably be touched on like going into that uh, MOU, but one thing that you know some institutions have are you know a physician being able to come in into the clinic you know for certain days or once a week or something like that. Before an athletic trainer wants to bring up that conversation with their team physician, what should they consider 
from the team physicians and about making that possible? Just keep in mind the the physicians' other responsibilities as well. You know, uh, realize that they have, you know, if from an orthopedic surgeon standpoint, they have days where they're going to be in the OR, days where they're going to be in practice. So, you know, let's don't set re- unrealistic expectations either. And and you know, it's, again, it's a it's a give and take thing. I think it's important for the team physician to to spend time in the athletic training room because it all comes down to the accessibility and availability aspect and earning the trust of the athletes. So they have mm-hmm. to be visible. Um, but how much? It's yeah, it's a give and take. Yeah, on the same lines, you know, as a team physician, I want to be available. You know, I want to go to the training room because it makes it easier for you know, student athletes, you know, I want to travel to them, you know, and make sure that I establish that rapport, that that working relationship. And, you know, if I'm not available, then if they come to me, fine. But, but, you know, oftentimes as a team physician, it's easier for you to go to them rather than, you know, the athletes, a bunch of athletes going to you. So Mm -hmm. that's just part of the job. I think it also um, as an athletic trainer's perspective, you also have to make it worth the physician's time because if they're going to come out to your athletic training room or athletic training facility and you're not maybe seeing a high load of athletes or, you know, you got to remember that the physician is taking the time out of their day to Mm -hmm. not only be here for the time there, but also the travel time. And that's a lot of time away from their clinic. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And same on the flip side of uh, we've had it where I've been before where the list starts getting a little too big and it's like, okay, hold on. (laughs) Like they got to go at like this time. We can't be fitting this many (laughs) right away. No, but no, honestly though, as a, as a team physician, you Mm -hmm. love doing this. You should love taking care of teams and athletes and you make time out of your busy schedule to do it. Absolutely. Right. And so that's, that shows the true dedication of a team physician. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, that's part of the responsibility. If you want to be a team physician, you got to make the effort, you got to make the time. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't think as an athletic trainer that I'm overloading or underloading Mm -hmm. a team physician's clinic when they're coming to the training room, even if there's no patients want to be available. That's awesome. That's good to know. I mean, it definitely makes a, the team physician more accessible if mm-hmm. the student athletes, even the ones who aren't necessarily seeing yeah. the team physician like that day, but they get to see a familiar face and they get yeah. to know, right. um, you know, they're part of the sports medicine team. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, if they ever have to go to that person, then, hey, I already, I've seen this person around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Definitely. I don't know. Have you had any instances where you worked where it was hard to reach a team physician? No, I've always been fortunate. Um, I've had, uh, you know, great mentors, both from the team physician and, and, and athletic training standpoint, where they, they were good role models and, and showed me, you know, the benefits of having that relationship. So it's, yeah, I've been lucky. And I think one of the benefits of aligning with a big institution or even an academic institution yeah. is that mm-hmm. it's not just the team physicians that are, you know, that you can go to, you know, they usually have some trainees like fellows who Mm -hmm. sports medicine fellows who part of their training for that year is to be very, very involved with, um, being a team physician. They're learning how to be a team physician. So they should always be accessible. So, um, you know, again, uh, if you're looking for a team physician, if you align with, someplace with fellows, you know, that those fellows hopefully should be, um, always available. Nice. That's awesome. That, that's good to know for sure. We've had some fellows help out with our pre-purchase and pre-participation screens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also just come to some football games. Yeah. Nice. And to your guys' point, like you said, like every physician that I've, uh, I've worked with has always been so willing and just taking the time out of their day, like Mm -hmm. always available to take a text, you know, even though you try not to, you know, try and oddball hours. But like you said, sometimes those, those triage moments, sometimes there's like, Hey, just, we just need a little guidance on this one thing or, you know, and all my 
in my experience, all my team physicians have always been so willing and grateful for the opportunity. So, right. When it was just being by myself, you know, a lot of those orders had to wait until, you know, the, the evenings when I was done with my work. But, you know, now that I have a support staff with Brian and my PA, you know, those things can be done in the middle of the day, which is, which is fantastic. It's better for everyone involved too. So. Absolutely. All right. You ready? I think it's time for some action. It is. So Sandra's a Sandra's a big action person for sure. I mean, I work football. That's true. She's all about all about it. All right. What advice would you give an AT that is looking to create or maintain a strong relationship with their physician? Go ahead. You go first. Uh, I mean, a lot of it's just kind of self-explanatory. It's self-explanatory. I mean, I think. Um, you know, it's all, you know, all the things that are involved with a good work, working relationship, you know, getting along, open lines, of communication and um, being transparent. I mean, those, those would be the biggest things. Uh, you know, if, if you guys get along and want to grab a beer outside work, you know, I think that's a bonus. Um, but it doesn't <laughs> always have to be that way. And, yeah. mm-hmm. um, you know, at the open line of communication and being transparent are, are, are key. Yeah. And I think being proactive, but not being overbearing as well, you know, know, know the line between those two qualities. I think is great. All right. Actually, I want a, a little bonus since it's, this is going to be for national athletic training month. Oh yes, that's right. Oh, Brian, nice. could you share a little bit more about your role? Like it, as an athletic trainer in your role? Oh, sure. Um, so so uh, a little bit, uh, Dr. Wong, well, Wong. Talk, talk about, talk about your experience before. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was 15 years in college football. I spent four years, uh, uh, as a director of sports medicine at a high school, um, Dr. Wong, uh, and Dr. Johnston at UCI, they both, uh, they're both orthopedic surgeons who have, uh, experience working with athletic trainers in their physician practice. So they wanted to hire someone who can help streamline things from their, from their clinical aspect. And they, they wanted someone who, uh, you know, was done on the sideline. They were very clear <laughs> and upfront with me that this, this position doesn't have, uh, sideline responsibilities. And, and after <laughs> almost 20 years, I was, I was all excited about that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, again, we have the same, we have the same priorities and outlook for their vision of sports medicine and myself. So I was, I was excited about it. I'm the first ever, uh, athletic trainer hired at UCI. So, uh, hopefully I made it worth their while. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, since, since I was hired, Dr. Wong hired a, an awesome PA who, uh, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're, you know, we got a good team going and uh, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. So seeing the patients, answering the messages, anything from scheduling patients to putting in orders, you know, it's it's the traditional phys- he, he, physician. He, he, he runs my clinic. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's uh, you know, he, if anyone who wants to get in, you know, I, I go to him to help coordinate, um, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, you know, VIP patient or, 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 or an athlete who needs to be seen the next day, you know, Brian gets it. And so, so he's, he's able to schedule for me. They're all right. VIPs. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> well, congratulations being, being the first one setting yeah, the tone. That's super it's awesome. Been great. It's been great. Hopefully yeah. we can hire some more for a, uh, for a sports medicine <laughs> practice. You know, we, sort of think along the same lines as a uh, ET. So, you know, it's, it's, he's a huge asset and he understands, uh, you know, mainly the return to sport and the rehab, you know, that's involved, um, with both non-surgical and surgical patients. So, you know, in the clinic setting, you know, um, you know, I have him do a lot of, uh, some, some manual work, some taping, with a lot of the, the patients and they, they, they love it. They, you know, they, they come in, they get even a little bit of treatment, you know, where most physician offices, they don't really get. So that gate mm-hmm. training. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, especially with patients, my post-surgical patients who I want to try to get off the crutches and brace soon, you know, I have them do a little assessment. So in the clinic, um, to tell them, Hey, you know, to, um, add on to what their physical therapist is telling them to, 
um, work on a home exercise program and hey, maybe we can unlock your brace now and sort of get them moving. So it's been great. Yeah, it's been nice. Fun. That's awesome. Do you feel like your traditional sports med or traditional sports um, experience prepared you for where you are? Yeah, definitely. Um, I really do. I, I, I think the timing was right. I think working with uh, uh, Dr. Wong and, and Dr. Johnston, the, I mean, everything just kind of lined up right. Um, you know, I was, I was ready for a different avenue um, in my career, but I, I certainly wanted to do something I, where my experience helped me. And uh, uh, working with, with the two orthopedic surgeons that, you know, I can bounce ideas off of. I've learned so much and, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a lot of fun, but yeah, it's, it, my experience has definitely helped me in this role. And we're not utilizing all his talents either. He keeps talking to me about dry needling and all this stuff. And, you know, unfortunately, I, you know, for, because of, uh, I wish he could do that in the clinic for me, but, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's it just, you know, again, uh, a flag trainer, fits perfectly in a sports medicine clinic um, with the patient population that we see. And I think the other providers are seeing it too, like even the trauma surgeons and the spine surgeons, mm -hmm. I, I think they see the benefit of having someone in this role. Well, uh, athletic trainers are used to working, what, 80 to 100 yeah, hours exactly. a week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, yep, not you, wrong. Yeah, you know, when you dumb it down to like, a, you know, a, just an outpatient clinic, you know, this is easy, easy. easy for them. I had last Monday thing. off. Like, that doesn't happen. Like, <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's that's really cool. That's really cool to hear that. Thanks for valuing the athletic trainers. Yes. <laughs> well, of course. That's yeah, great. Man. Um, actually, I also have one more bonus question. A lot I'm of just action. full of bonus. Yeah, this is today. an action movie. Uh, What's the best way to thank your physician? Ooh, your team I like that. Physician? Wow. Gear. <laughs> give them, give <laughs> okay. them clothes. Give them clothes and shoes with with the uh, with the logo on it. They they always want more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Flag is, true. is is always is always uh, <laughs> is a good thing for us. It makes us happy. <laughs> <laughs> and if they go on the road, give them their own hotel room. <laughs> mm. Ooh, fair big time good idea that's fair <laughs> sweet awesome all right i think that wraps it up yep that was perfect oh awesome thanks guys thank you no yeah. thank you guys so much we appreciate this so i thought what a you know talking about this and like it definitely does give you a lot of pointers and some things to keep in mind when you're talking to your physicians or going out and trying to find a team physician but also kind of like what we talked about is it does kind of go back to some of that un kind of unteachable stuff of just interpersonal skills and mm -hmm. being able to just communicate and, you know, how do you build relationships with other people? Yeah, it really does. And I think also the more physicians you work with, the more you're going to realize that it's not a one size fits all. Absolutely. And, you know, for the, young athletic trainer, right? The athletic trained student who maybe just got certified or, you know, that first year or two out, right? Like you could probably still feel a little intimidated when talking to physicians. I know that was one thing that, you know, I struggled with when I first started, you know, Hey, I'm just, I'm not trying to sound dumb, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you're talking to the physician like, Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't say anything dumb. No, like if someone's w willing to be a team physician or is wanting to be a team physician, they're there to help. And that's my been, been my experience. They're so willing to help. They're just always so, Hey, what do you need? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like, like I'll text them late at night. Like, thank you so much. I'm sorry for late text. No, 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 no worries. No worries. You know, I'm happy to help, you know, and that's kind of been the theme that I've seen amongst team physicians. They're just so willing to, Hey, how can I help you guys? I had with one of our team physicians an hour and a half call the other day where um, we were talking back and forth about several of our athletes. And then all of a sudden he was like, hey, have you ever seen this this clavicle th <laughs> that I don't remember? It was like, um, I don't remember what it was, but 
he um he texted me a picture. He's like, okay, look at this. If you're looking at <laughs> like at the distal end of the clavicle, it's this. And he, he was just really excited to mm-hmm. teach me about something that I haven't seen before. Yeah. And of course, we don't really deal with too many like x-rays, MRIs, um, as far as like us reading them, mm-hmm. obviously. So um, it was really cool just to like once you have a relationship with a physician, um, they're really willing to help you not only just – yeah. take care of your athletes but also so you get to learn and absolutely. figure out just more knowledge absolutely like that was one of my favorite things about like helping out with doc visits or like i really do get bummed out not being able to go to a lot of appointments with my student athletes because like it is a fun opportunity for me also to learn mm-hmm. right i also like it because it is nice to hey prep the team physician on what's going on so they're kept up to speed um, letting them know, Hey, here's what we've done. Here's what we're kind of thinking and like stuff like that. I like that part, but also just the aspect of being in there and like listening to the physician interact with the patient and listening to them, you know, talk about the pathology and learn from it. And especially if it's a case where it's like, well, this is like, I've never seen this before. Like, it's so fun to just be able to sit there and just learn. Mm hmm. So switching gears, if you guys are new, every other episode we do is education or stories. This one was an education episode. Next week, we're going back to our story episodes where we share experiences from athletic trainers from all over the world who submit stories on our Instagram, which you can follow us at AT Corner Mm -hmm. Podcast. And we'll post story prompts around midweek every other week. Um, So keep an eye out in our Instagram stories. You can turn on post notifications if you'd like. Um, just so you don't miss those prompts. Um, so we'll be turning back to those next week. And then if you want to discuss this episode, we do have a Facebook group that you can do that in facebook.com slash group slash AT Corner Podcast. There's one question to get in. Where did you hear about our podcast? And then you can join the conversation with other athletic trainers, clinicians, and all of the sort. Yep, absolutely. And we are keeping the National Athletic Training Month momentum going. Yes, we That's are. Right. Yes, we're, we are. We're in the middle of it. Don't forget our special giveaway details are on our instagram yes very excited for that randy you got anything else dad nope that was perfect thank you for helping us showcase athlete training behind the tape bye